Hello everyone. Today I am going to tell you how to manage the thalassemia major child. World Thalassemia Day celebrated on 8th May every year. These are the images of our institute thalassemia center. Today I am going to tell you the details of principles of management of thalassemia major. So how to correct the anemia by repeated blood transfusion, how to remove the excess iron by the iron chelators, how to treat the complication, how to cure the disease by bone marrow transplantation and gene replacement therapy, what are the various pharmacological methods or drugs to increase the gamma gene synthesis, then splenectomy in thalassemia major child, then the prevention by antenatal diagnosis and counseling. So correction of anemia by repeated blood transfusion. So about the blood transfusion, you should know what is our goal of giving the blood transfusion to the thalassemia major. What are the indications, objectives, what are the various regimes, effect and types of blood transfusion. Then what should be the rate of blood transfusion. Fed red cell transfusion, there are five major goals. To prevent the anemia, to reduce the hepatosplenomegaly by reducing ineffective erythropoiesis. It will reduce the hemolytic phases if proper blood transfusion is given to the child. It will improve the tissue oxygenation. It will improve the growth of the child. So these are our five major goals why we are giving the blood transfusion to the thalassemic children. Now what are the indications? It is mandatory for all the children with the thalassemia major. Regular blood transfusion is the main stay of treatment for thalassemia major child. Children with the thalassemia intermediate who cannot maintain the hemoglobin above 7 gram per dl or showing the evidence of growth retardation or severe bony changes in this also blood transfusion therapy is required. Now what are the objectives of blood transfusion therapy? There is a current uh, recommendation is to maintain the mean hemoglobin level of 12 gram per dl and transfuse the child at the level of 9 to 10.5 gram per dl. Post transfusion hemoglobin should not rise above the 15 to 16 gram per dl. So pre transfusion hemoglobin should be between 9 to 10.5. What are the various transfusion regimes? We label as a palliative transfusion if we are maintaining pre transfusion hemoglobin up to 8.5. Moderate transfusion if we are maintaining between 9 to 10.5. So we are following this one. Hypertransfusion when we are maintaining pre transfusion hemoglobin between 10 to 12 gram percent. And super transfusion when we are maintaining more than 14 gram percent hemoglobin in pre transfusion. What is the effect of transfusion on growth and development of the child? When we are giving the regular blood transfusion, it will prevent the excessive erythropoiesis. So, avoiding the expansion of bone marrow and precluding the early features like marrow hyperplasia, which leading to the abnormalities, hepatosplenomegaly, hemolytic phases, and increased GI absorption of iron. So, all this we can prevent by giving the regular blood transfusion. Prevention of chronic hypoxia, which in turn promotes the normal growth and development, which is very important for the child. So if patient will remain anemic and regular blood transfusion is not we are giving, then child will have the chronic hypoxic manifestation. So the growth and development will be affected. Now in the type of transfusion, most ideal way is to transfuse the thalassemic child group and type is specific and compatible by the direct antiglobulin test cross matching cums cross matching should be done for each transfusion to prevent the aluminization otherwise there is 
incidence of around 5 to 20 percent in thalassemic children if we are not giving the Coombs cross match RBC. Hematocrit should be standardized between 65 to 75 percent and red cells should be fresh not more than 4 to 5 days old to maintain the adequate level of 2,3 DPG. Ideally, we should use a leukodepleted red cell. If it is not possible, then we can use the filter at bedside, leukodepletion or leukoreduction filter. It is also costly. If not affordable, then we can use the triple saline washed RBC. There are various other method of leukodepletion. We can use the frozen red cells. Filtration can be done in the blood bank or we can use the apheresis. Now the amount of transfusion. So if splenectomy is done, then requirement is 30% less. So 133 ml per kg every year required after splenectomy to maintain the hemoglobin 10 gram percent. Otherwise 180 ml per kg every year is required. In a child who is not sensitized, there is a no yellow immunization and splenectomy is also not done. Now the rate of transfusion. Every time we have to transfuse 10 to 15 ml per kg over a period of 4 to 5 hours. We should set the rate between 3 to 4 ml per kg per hour. Should not be more than 5 ml per kg per hour. We have to transfuse every 2 to 4 weeks to maintain the pre-transfusion hemoglobin above 10 gram. Patient with the cardiac decompensation should be given at the rate of not more than 1 to 2 ml per kg per hour. So the patient will take the almost 6 to 8 hours if having already cardiac decompensation. So this is all about the blood transfusion therapy. Rest of the part I will cover in next few videos. Thank you so much.